Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Elliott. I'm here today with one of my really good friends. He's inside my brotherhood. This guy's done some crazy stuff. This guy's company got acquired by Red Bull. Listen, I, wa I want you to understand something really quick, okay? Um, we were talking about the blue collar millionaire, right? Yeah. Like this guy's got a story um, from going from nothing to making millions to going broke to mentally struggling. Yeah. And then pulling yourself out, building a massive company, getting acquired by Red Bull. Rolling on private jets, helicopters, and all kinds of shit. Hey, hey, you want to know what you're capable of? Wait till you hear this guy's story. By the way, I think I don't respect anybody who hadn't lost it or been on their ass or been dead on E. Because a lot of people right now, they're watching this and they want a big life. And there's a lot of people that are full of fluff telling them, do this, do that, do this. Like, listen, man, like I want to learn from somebody that had it all ripped away from them or, and then and then had to come back yep. or that made it and lost it and make it again. Because yep. if you can if you can make it once, maybe you got lucky. But if you make it twice, you're a badass. Yeah. Um, so this guy's Thank super. You. He's super street smart. I was just telling him and obviously and he doesn't want to take credit for any of it because I was just trying to tell him how smart he is. And he was like, I'm not that smart. And you know what I learned is that the people that are the are most successful are most coachable. And they want to give more than they receive. I try to give him something. He's like, I don't need anything. And then he wants to give back. And that's how just that's how the top people in the world operate. You know, um, they just have a hard time taking credit for anything. And, you know, you just want to keep giving, which is why you turned into a coach now. Yeah. And you got this big badass coaching deal going on. You're just you're just always trying to give and help. You're super smart. You see where the money's at. We talked about like. All these things that you do. And I'm going to let you tell your story because it's your story yeah. and nobody tells it better than you. And, guys, get ready to put yourself in his shoes. Number one, um, I love you, bro. I appreciate you. He's got a kick-ass family. Um, he's 43 years old. He's one 44, year. 44. 44. He's my age. He's my twin brother. We both have no hair. And we both are be in the sun all the time, so we got tan. We so love I Arizona. Love yeah, we love Arizona. So um, anyways, uh, rock and roll, man. And you can start wherever you want. And thank you so much for being here. Yep. I know you're going to change a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you as quickly as I can and try to hit all the key points of my journey. But I've always wanted to be a businessman since I was a kid. And I, I learned things, now looking back on it, learned things even as a young kid that I would later on use in the development of my businesses but if you were to go back and see me in high school I probably wouldn't have been the uh, voted in the most uh, likely to uh, succeed and or, or, or to be as uh, successful as I am but I went to call it tell me why would you say that well always the wise because I say that same thing but like give us just a couple of it, examples of why you might it, be counted out anybody watching this that went to high school with me would look at me as the most ADD person they've ever met and back when I was going to high school ADD was not common so like that was a disease right yeah. and uh if, if you were a teacher that couldn't engage me very very easily I I was I was off I was wanting to do something else so I was I was ADD. I still am ADD. And, uh, you know, unless it was... Because yeah, there's a lot of people just like that. So I'm glad you yeah. said that because those people are dangerous. Yeah, completely dangerous. So uh, Good. graduated high school in a little rural community I was in. Everybody back then, and I still think to a degree today, they think that they have to check the boxes off. So checking one of the boxes off, I felt like, well, everybody's going to college. I need to go to college. And I didn't like school, but I thought that was one of the boxes. So I went to college and I had a marketing teacher, in, a professor in college. And this was kind of a pivotal moment in college. He says, we're going to, I went to college at Boise State. I was a college dropout. And he says, we're going to write a marketing plan for a Fortune 500 company. And this is what I want you guys to do. And uh, I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it, but I'm going to be clear with you. I've never wrote a marketing plan for a Fortune 500 company, he says. And I'm thinking, Wow we're paying a lot of money for me to come learn from this guy and he hasn't even wrote a marketing plan for a big company before and it wasn't too much longer after that that I just decided this wasn't for me so I came home from college and uh, I needed to have a job to survive so I got a job in, in uh, family owned trucking business mm -hmm. and they hired me to wash trucks and uh, you know I, I said geez I, I view myself as somebody that can do more than wash trucks so I talked him into giving me a chance to dispatch trucks for like 20 grand a year. I can't remember how much it was. It was a ridiculous amount a year. But I, I was interested in learning the, the trade. And it was a very difficult job because I was dispatching truck drivers that were 60 and 70 years old and been driving truck for years and years and years. And as I was learning the craft and I was learning it, uh, 
you know, from the veterans that were doing that job, I realized that I'm never going to be able to really succeed as being a dispatcher working in the office unless I learn how to drive truck. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to drive truck, and I, every weekend I dispatched during the week, and every weekend I would leave the office early, and I would drive from Idaho to Long Beach, California. I'd drive all weekend long and drive back, and then I started making extra money. So this low salary as a dispatcher I was making, I was supplementing it with driving truck over the weekend. And uh, long, long story short, it was it was a good skill, and my job became a little easier because now I could relate to the people that I was leading, right, that I was dispatching. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Uh, about that time in my mid-20s, all of my buddies uh, started making a fortune in the construction business. They were making a lot more than me, and I was working seven days a week, and they were building houses and selling houses. And when I was in high school, I worked on building houses. I knew a little bit about it. I knew how to lead people, how to mm -hmm. talk to people. And so I thought, you know what? These guys are making a lot more money than me. So uh, even though I was developing a skill and, and learning all about the truckload transportation industry, I jumped out of it into another industry that I didn't know as much about. And it didn't take me very long, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half before I was building 10 houses, 25 houses a year, wow. 30 houses a year. And I became a millionaire in my mid twenties. And, um, uh, you know, I was ordering new trucks. I was taking my family on Disney cruises and in the little rural community that I was in, in the neighborhood, you know, I got all of a sudden driving brand new trucks and I'd get back from one Disney cruise and then we would Google it and try to figure out what our next cruise was. And we were, we were spending money like it was going out of style because you hang an M you're a millionaire on, you know, from your accountant says, yeah, you know, this is your net worth. And you think, wow, you know, I don't really understand how she'd come up with the fact that that's my net worth, but I'm a millionaire. Let's order another truck and let's do this and let's do that. And it didn't take very long before the housing market crashed. Mm. And I had the skills to build that money and I didn't have the appropriate skills and several of my buddies hung in there and made it through, but I didn't have the proper tools in my tool belt to manage that business through the housing market crash mm -hmm. and I lost it all. And it was very public, just as public as it was my rise to have it being pretty successful. I mean, I was donating to the local high school and I was donating to this and that. And it was it was very public, the the rise and the failure was very public. And, and uh, I don't know if I was being talked about at kitchen tables, but I felt like I was and it, it mentally destroyed me. It took mm -hmm. my pride away from me and just chewed it all up. So after, uh, and back in this day and age, Andy, there was no coaches or mentors, right? And uh, there, I, I needed to find somebody who's been through this, who still climbed out of it and uh, was able to become successful. That was my life dream. I wanted to be a successful businessman. I couldn't find that many people mm -hmm. that had done that. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't what it is today, you know, the coaching world and mentors and everything else. Yeah. And, uh, but long story short, after, you know, a couple short stints and some other things, I needed to provide for my family and, and I had one semi truck that I'd bought when I was uh, successful in construction and uh, I hopped in that semi truck and I started driving semi truck and I drove every day from Idaho to Indiana. I did a little bit of work in the oil fields. Then I drove every day from Idaho to Indiana, seven, six days a week. I'd be home for a day and some days I'd drive all day long, all night long into sunrise, then into the next dinner hour straight through without even stopping. I, te I, tell, I tell a story uh, to people that I coach or, or when I'm in a speaking engagement and um, that, that I remember very, very well as I was driving down these interstates on my way to Indiana, uh, it was dark and the interstate was pretty empty, right? And then the sunrise would come up and then you start seeing a lot more cars, people taking their kids to school, people going to work, whatever else. Lunch hour, it'd get a little busier again. People, the hustle and bustle, people going to lunch hour. Dinner time, you start seeing cars, soccer moms. You know, they got kids, kids in their car gets busier and busier. And I was driving through all this whole cycle. And then we'd get into evening and I'd look out and as I'd pass on freeways and I'd see baseball games going on. And I was missing all this for my kids. I was trying to survive. And I'd see baseball go, things, games going on and I'd think, man, I wished I was at my kids' events or my baseball game. And then after the next cycle, all of a sudden there wasn't very much traffic on the road later in the evening and you'd see lights on in people's houses a couple more hours as i kept driving i'd just see porch lights and it was empty 
And I remember telling myself as I continued to drive through all those different cycles that I have to be willing to work harder than every single person in every single one of those cars that I had passed throughout the day, throughout lunch, throughout evening. And now that they're in bed, I have to work harder. They're giving me an opportunity mm. to win by them going to bed. And so I would drive truck for as long as I possibly could, snow, rain, wind, you name it. And it wasn't, didn't take too long before one truck ended up into another truck and then another truck. And I ended up building my truck line into a multi-million dollar empire. And I did that a lot by uh, surrounding myself with some amazing people, uh, being a, a pretty good leader. I got better over time as a leader, you know, but everybody should always work continuously forever to be a good leader, I think, but I, I improved. And uh, one of the things while I was building that multi-million dollar empire that catapulted me is in my head is most people that own big truck lines nationally uh, it's like third generation or fourth generation. The, one truck and trailer is as much as a house. Mm -hmm. And I was broke a couple of years before. You think anybody wanted to? So I needed to, I needed to have hundreds of them if I was going to make money. And, and, and how was I going to do that coming out of being broke? And the answer is willpower. And the other thing is I was starting later, starting later in my life. Now I've, I had lost time from when I went, when I went broke. And so I started realizing the way I was going to build this into a multi-million dollar empire is I'm going to have to make acquisitions. Mm. Well, when I started realizing that, I started studying the whole idea of making acquisitions. And I told myself I need to be able to buy truck lines for very low multiplier on their EBITDA and integrate my strategies, my protocols, and make them an asset, turn them into an asset. And so I'd buy truck lines for very, very cheap, and I would mold them into my truck line. And uh, at the end of the day, I ended up selling seven or eight times any seven or eight times higher than any other truck line I ever bought. That's and so I, I'm really a big believer on, you know, the money's made on the buy and on the sell. Mm -hmm. You got to be a good operator, period, because if you can't sell it, you know, you got to keep running it and operate it. But uh, yeah, and then in in 2022. Uh, I mean, I bought several other businesses I told you about that, that helped the truck line. Mm -hmm. And then in 2022, I sold it to a Red Bull owned company out of Europe and because uh, Red Bull's from Europe and um, the, the, the story's history from there on to on to the next mountain, on to the next journey. That's crazy. Uh, that's where I'm at. All I can say is, wow. Like, like, listen, dude, first of all, that's an Instagram reel when he was talking about when I was driving and I was going through the cycles and then I would see the porch lights, you know, from like seeing the morning to dark to, to the, the late soccer the day. fields, the baseball yeah. fields. And then you would literally say, all right, this is my opportunity to get ahead. They're giving me a chance. They're Then people are going to bed, that porch light shutting off and they're giving me a yeah, chance. That's an Instagram reel, Sean. I'm not even joking, bro. We need to make that because that right there, that, that little piece, I love that because I'll, I'll truly tell you that, my life right now, the life that I have, I honestly sit there and sometimes I'm like seeing stars. Like sometimes like I know that I've worked myself past my mental capacity. I honestly know that I've stayed awake for way too long. I know that I've done way too much. I know this, but I know that everyone else, I see them start to to, to wind down and I'm like, this is my chance you to get ahead. You can outlast them. Yeah, I'm like, this is my chance to get ahead. Um, in 2019, when I started my business, David Goggins said that he- Stud. He, yeah, and I love him. And Love he, that guy, I'd love to meet him one day. Oh yeah, I, dude, I've met him, he's amazing. And I'm telling you bro, like, when I met him, did you ever see that reel I posted with him? Uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's like, oh, I know who you are. He's like, yeah, you're that son of a bitch that makes people pull the shirt up, show the six pack and shit, <laughs> call <laughs> people out. I like that shit, yeah. that's my dog. I liked it. But my point is, is I started watching him when I started and I would, I would, uh, you know, like I, I started with Goggins and then I run into him. He's like, I know who you are. So watch. So he built, I told him, I go, did you build this? And let me explain. Um, he would always say when people were slowing down, he knew it was his time to shine. Yeah. He said when he was going through hell week, right. That he would see people's like soul leaving their body. Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah. He's like, this is my time to really go in. Like, this is where I show up. And I'm telling you, dude, I always tell people that you got to get sick in the head. Yeah. 
you know, you got to lose your mind to modern day society. You got to lose Absolutely. your mind to, to the nine to five. And so, pe so many people are stuck in this, um, this like, well, it's early. It's, you know, it's, we go to bed at night, dude, you're given 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Okay. You know, God says he'll give you Sunday to rest. Right. And notice you said, Hey, I went home on, on Sunday. Yeah. I went home on that one day. And most people, they get what they want the weekend off and they ain't work through the week. Yeah. They ain't even work through the week. You yeah. don't deserve a weekend. God built the world in seven days, rested on the seventh. You grinded for six days yeah. and you rested on the seventh. And so many people, they want balance. They don't give trophies for balance. Yeah. People don't get acquired for balance. They don't, Red yeah. Bull don't buy your company when you're after balance. Yeah. Dude, now that you're 44 years old, you know, and obviously that was a couple years ago, but you're sitting here, you got a great life. You're doing these things. Do listen during that time. So many people, they won't give up five or six years, yeah. but they'll waste 80 years of their life, but they won't give up five or six to build a legacy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And dude, and, and I love that. I love that. Uh, even while you were talking, I'm like, dude, I like this guy. Well, I appreciate that. I, I look up to you as well. I've watched you for a long time now. And, and when you speak, um, I don't care who you are that's listening. I can, I can relate to that shit because it's like, you know, people need, people need to hear it the hard way. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, it's either you tell them or me telling them, but it's like when they come to work for me, are you a killer? Can you put all the drama at the door and can you come in and can you come in and win? And then I'm going to tell you, you know, you said work-life balance, fuck work-life balance, right? But when I say, and I say that on social media quite a bit, but when I say fuck work-life like work -life balance, you got to understand what work-life balance is. Mm -hmm. uh, not spending time with your kids doesn't have any part of work-life balance. That you need to take as a priority, in my opinion. When I say fuck work-life balance, it's different to me. What I'm saying, work-life, I'm thinking of life as I ain't going fishing. I'm working. Mm -hmm. I, ain't, I ain't going to that basketball game. I'm building something. Now, obviously, I do. I play a little bit. But when I was building Fuck work like ba work life balance. I yeah. was I was not playing screwing off as much as the people that were surrounding me or the neighbors or whatever else was. And that to me is work life balance. Is people think that they need to have a mixture of other things in. But when you're when you know family is serious, okay. But everybody says when I say work life balance, that means that family's not important to me. I'm I'm, I'm talking about everything else besides family. There, it, you can't be balanced and win yeah, at the there's same no time. There's no hobbies besides family. Yeah. everything but but family. Yeah, as soon as I met you, it's like, dude, we don't do TV. Yeah, we don't do these things, and and I like that, you know, because a lot of people, man, they just go through life, and you know, um, you 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 create this momentum. Most people Monday through Friday. And then they give it all back on the weekend, right? And they say, "Well, that's my time to rest, dude. You don't even you don't even need to rest. Yeah. You rest it all week, yeah, dude. You shouldn't. Even, that's like when people start working out and they say, "What kind of re recovery should I do, dude? You haven't even been working out hard for long enough, and you're already talking about recovery. Yeah, it, I, it, it's like, what are you talking about, man? I, I work out, I work out, and I shouldn't say this because I should be like Arnold, right? But I work out seven days a week because inevitably there will be a week or a, there will be a day somewhere." where a kid event gets in the way or something mm -hmm. gets in the way. So if you just commit to seven days a week, the weeks you get all seven in, great. But you gotta know something, life is gonna happen that might get in the, in the way of your workout routine. So my goal is, is, is seven days a week. And I usually at least get six, if not seven. Yeah, and you know something I know about you, and I wanna go back to this point, because this is a big one. This is, gonna be, this is gonna be where the money's made right here. Okay, so how when you were lost at all and publicly, I love that you said the word publicly. It was public that I was successful and I grew a million dollar net worth. And then it was public that you lost it all. Mm, yeah. And then you were saying it was very, everybody was very aware that everything got taken from us. And, and you talked about this mental health, right? Right. You talked about like being alone, you know, like driving in a truck and being alone. I mean, I don't know if anybody else missed that, but like, dude, I completely picked up on you being alone in a truck, just you on the road. I mean, a lot of people think like, I'm going to put a gun to my head. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do this no more. Like I'm, I'm all alone. I don't just, but you mentally got tougher. Right. So like, I'm just telling you like, dude, a lot of people quit, man, whether they quit and quit on life, quit in life, they quit when things get hard. So what would you say helped you be mentally tough 
after we're going to call it a world embarrassment to you, right? Because you said, I don't know if people were talking about me at kitchen tables, but I sure felt like they were. Yeah. Like, I understand that, man, because, you know, this pride, you know, like, hey, I told you I was going to make it. Remember everybody said you're the last yeah. to make it? And then now you made it. And now you're like, damn, man, like those guys were right. Yeah. Like those guys are right. I bet they're laughing at me now. Right. Yeah. But then who you got the last laugh. Okay, you're riding on your private jet, you got your helicopters, you got that. So you redeemed yourself and you're a true overcomer, right? So like, how did you, like, how did you, how did you get mentally tough? Like, like, honestly, like, talk to us a little bit about that, because I think that that's the, that's where the big money's well, I'm gonna, at. I'm going to say something that's going to rock people's world. Good. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a divorced man after mm -hmm. 21 years. And here's the part that's going to rock people's world is that I give a lot of credit for the success that I've had and for overcoming those challenges to my ex-wife. I love that. She, she was an amazing person. It's, when I say that to people, it blows their mind. You know, when, but, when but I, why do you think that blows their well, mind? Well, I think that everybody's like checking the boxes. Everybody thinks if you're going to have an ex-wife, that means that she's an enemy. She, yeah. she, she's not an enemy. She's a very, she was a very instrumental part in my growth. But the other thing is, is once you gather yourself up, you rise up out of the ashes and you realize, you know what, shit, that wasn't that bad because guess what? My kids are happy to see me when I get home from working and I still have a roof over my head and there's a lot of people that don't and I still have this and I still have yeah, that. She, and you she supported to, you like she hell. She supported me like hell and, you, and she took care of the family while I, while I was grinding it through and you want to know what else I realized I had and it took me a little bit, mm -hmm. but I had work ethic like no other. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was a level above in the work ethic. I knew that I could sell. I knew that I, you know, the soft skills, I knew I had those soft mm -hmm. skills. I just needed to get the voices in my head straight. And it took a little time, it took a little time, but a lot of solo time, a lot of time in the truck, staring out the windshield until eventually those voices in my head were positive voices in my head. And, uh, you know, can, one can, step at a time. Can you relate to this? Because I always say this, but like, when you listen to yourself, you become weak because you like sympathize with yourself yeah. and you reason, right? But when you tell yourself, you become strong. Yeah. Like you just tell yourself, yeah. right? And do you feel like, like on the times you were weak, you're like listening to yourself and yeah. then the times you were strong, you're like, hell no, this yeah. is what we're going to do. Yeah. It's like proving everyone wrong yeah. stage. You're like, you're like mother effing yourself. Yeah. Right. And then on the times where you're like, oh, man, you know, I should have done this differently. I should have done that. It's like, yeah, dude, there's like self-assessment, but like, dude, listening to yourself and becoming a victim is what 99% yeah. of the world does. That's why I tell people, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to listen to yeah. myself. My feelings never have taken me to winning. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, look, if, if you're a businessman, you got to be a good leader. You preach that, right? Mm -hmm. How can you be a good leader if you can't lead the voices in your head in the right direction? Mm -hmm. You start with controlling and leading the voices in your head in the, in the right direction. And it took a lot of work for me to do that. Yeah. But once I got control over that, uh, and, and got rid of all the outside noise and was like, you know, every, every person that I felt like, uh, was having something negative to say about me or what I was doing or whatever else, uh, was food. And you hear that from a lot of people, they were food for me. And, and, and let's be honest to any of your listeners that are out there, including you, I want to say one that. thing I've bought businesses, I've built businesses, I've sold businesses and I've closed the doors on more businesses than all of them combined. So mm -hmm. there is failure. And if you can't control your thoughts in your head, all those failures start taking a toll on you and you'll never win. That's, that's how I feel. That's your greatest responsibility. It is, 100%. Yeah, and that's, that's why I'm attracted to you. Uh, I say not, it every day. That's why I'm attracted to you because uh, it's, as far as a, you know, a motivational mentor and everybody else that doesn't follow you, if they follow me, they need to follow this well, guy. We just saw Because he's a leader. He, you will show people how to control the outside noise and the inside noise yeah if they just pay attention to what you're doing yeah i say this all the time my wife um i used to work from seven in the morning six in the morning to 11 at night yeah and then you know her she would keep the kids up waiting on me yeah until i got home awesome. and and her friends would be like don't you think it's unhealthy for your kids you know to to you know stay up till 11 o'clock at night waiting on their dad i mean i think it's healthy for them not to get sleep she's like i think it's unhealthy for my kids to grow up without a dad yeah so we're good and she would just ditch everybody. 
And like, she just stuck by me. And um, I was listening to this podcast this morning with Dean Graciosi. Yeah. And uh, um, he, so he's my coach. Like he's, me and him are like super close. Yeah. He's a badass. Yeah. His kid, yeah, his son interns with us. His daughter's boyfriend interns with us. They come over and cold plunge. They're super cool. Me and Dean are close. But Dean, so Dean had this podcast with Ed Milet about two weeks ago. Right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you, and you ought to listen to it cause he talks about his ex ex wife and he talks about like, he's like, dude, I was a bad guy. He's yeah. like, honestly, he's like, I was going to be just like my dad. I don't want to be anything like my dad. He goes, I love my dad, but you can look at my father's eyes. And every time I see him, I can tell my father tears up every time. Cause he knows he's not, he, he wishes he could go back. Right. Like, like to me, I love my life. And he goes, I'm going to tell you this. I, I could have ended up like him. Now it's like people run towards a life that they want or people run from a way where they run from a life that they don't want. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, I realized he goes at 46 years old. So he's, he's got his new wife now. She's amazing. They got kids together. They're on fire. Everything's good. But they just went through this turmoil deal. Life was crazy. And this is at 46 years old. So like, he's like two years older than me now. He's 54 now. Life's amazing. He's on, he's on cloud nine. He's crushing, he's killing it. And he's like, I needed to get right with my ex-wife. That was the problem. He's like, I just, I, he's like, I came from a broken family between my mom and my dad. They'd been married nine times to nine different, no, nine different people. He's like, dude, I didn't want to be anything like them. And the, and I told myself I would never have a divorce, like never. And here I am, I'm going through a divorce of my wife. And he's like, it just ripped me apart, man. Who's my nine-year-old going to spend their weekend with? If I'm on the road traveling, what if I come back and I'm on this trip and I come home and then I miss my week with him? He's like, he's like, I got to get right with her. And so, like, he went and he made amends with his ex-wife and, and they're really good friends now. Yeah, that's great. And they have great a great story. Yeah, and they have a great life. But he, he was telling Ed, he goes, the best thing that I ever did was make amends with my ex-wife. And now... We're all one family. Yeah. She, she's, she's happy. I'm happy. I look, I, I you know, like my, he's like, I, I wasn't always good to her and my wife now. He's like, I would be executed before I treat her bad. Yeah. He's like, like I, she, she hears some of the things that, that I did to my ex-wife and she's like, there's no way yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, dude, it's like life is crazy. He's like, but one of the best things I ever did. And he, and he's such a good dude now, totally changed, total recreation, total new man. So like, like as we grow, as we get older, so like when people, when I hear these stories and we've told these stories, this gives you an opportunity to put yourself in our shoes, in Dean's shoes, in your shoes, and not have to go through it yourself, yeah. right? Now, you're going to have to go through hell. You're going to have to go through the long nights. You're going to have to outwork everybody. Look, dude, people saying they need eight hours of sleep, they need seven hours of sleep, dude, who, says who? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. Like, when you're on a mission, when you're trying to build something, you don't sleep. You can't sleep. You don't want to sleep. Like, dude, like, when your life doesn't have any... Okay, there's this book. It's like, Be Your Future Self Now. And it says, Hope in the Future, right? And if you have hope in the future, you don't want to sleep. Because all you can think about is what's to come. You know it's there. I don't want to speed up time. I don't want to lose time. But damn, that shit looks good. I just can't wait to get there. And so I have hope in the future. So I almost want to delegate sleep because I don't want to sleep. Yeah. I'm like, my life, like, yeah. I feel like I'm actually working towards something, you know, and you were working towards something and all these things. And notice getting acquired, selling your business, doing all these things. It's like once you thought you got there and here you are, I'll start up again. Yeah, well, I, I get asked from people that don't have brains like you and I, why aren't you on the beach? Mm. And and here's the thing, is because it's the farthest thing from my mind. What 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 I think about is what little I have accomplished so far. Yeah, you know, and it, and it seems to be a lot to a lot of people, but to me, it's not. I'm I'm, I'm barely making it to first base. That's well, how I view it. Well, you're after a legacy. Yeah, like. Like, dude, and by the way, you're after impact in people's lives now. Look, once you prove you can do it to you, you can do it to everyone else. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you had to be the guinea pig first, that your yeah. crazy ass ideas and your, you know, your implementation and how you did stuff actually was 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 capable of, of working. And not only did you do it once, but you're in your 20s, but you weren't mature enough yet. Or you got hit with bad times because seasons have the tools hit. in my tools belt. Yeah. Tool belt. There was people that survived the downturn. Yeah. I just wasn't one of them. Yeah. And by the way, like, it was good you didn't stay in because look what happened. 
right? Amen. You were, yeah. So building houses was like building your life. It yeah. wasn't even the houses, you know what I mean? It was, you found a way to make money. You learned how to operate in business, but you never been hit with something hard like that. And then once you came out of it, you had to go through this hard thing and this trucking deal. Most people wouldn't have the, the, um, I'm going to call, what's that called? It's, it's like, it would be embarrassing to be a truck driver now. Oh. Wait, he was a home builder. He was building, you know, 30 homes a year. He's multimillionaire. He's driving trucks now. Yeah. He's a truck driver. Yeah. Dude, I went there. I went oh man! It, and I realized how badass truck hey. drivers are now. Oh yeah, you but know? listen, but but I want to tell everybody something. When you said you thought about all that hate, and that was going through, dude, like, I love what you said. You go, it was food. Yeah. Like, dude. Yeah. Like I'm sitting here and I'm like, damn man, I just think about because I always say like it motivates me. But then you're like, it's food, and I'm like, I like food better. Yeah. Like, that sounds good. Like, it's like you're hungry for more. Mm -hmm. It's like, go ahead, say everything nasty about me you can. Seriously. Because all you do is make me more hungry. Yeah. You make me more dangerous. Yeah. Like, it's food. I needed to be fed today. I didn't, I don't, because I bet, you see, he's one of these guys that if somebody was to tell you they believe in you, right, and that you, they know you're going to be great, that doesn't do anything for you. If someone says there ain't a chance in hell you're going to make it and you're not going to do this, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see that well, see that shit gets you like where you're like oh dude i'm gonna eat your face yeah let me tell you why well we don't want to go too long here i'm sure but let me tell you one quick story that's very powerful good and, let's and do it we'll, I, want, I want i want your listeners my listeners anybody's listening to think about this when i was growing my business and i'd been broke so it was very difficult to get anyone to want to lend you any money right i think i got turned down by 20 different banks, institutions to give me any kind of operating line of credit or any kind of lending, okay? Finally, I walked into this bank, had my cowboy boots on, and I ended up talking to the branch manager of that bank. And I went to him and I says, you're going to see a business that's starting to run very well, but the owner isn't that credit, credit worthy. I need you to believe in me, and I need you to believe in what the financials are that you're seeing right now outside of the credit worthiness of me losing everything and he sat and he was the branch manager of that bank okay and he sat there and looked at me and i'd been turned down 20 times if not more and he sat there and looked at me and he says i shouldn't do this but i'm going to extend you an operating line of credit i'm going to tell you what guys today that guy is the president of that bank and he reached out to me and said there's a board position board of directors on the bank opening up soon and I'm going to nominate you to sit on the board would you accept if I nominate you wow the bank after all those banks that turned me down the bank that finally gave me an opportunity and now you know I haven't been nominated yet he just asked me if I would accept so uh so I can't say I sit on the board but how powerful is that to know Huge. from getting a loan from the bank to now being one that sits on the board is pretty damn powerful yeah. on the board of the bank well I love what you said it, you number one you, you sold them on yourself. And I think that everybody needs to understand that, you know, your belief, he could feel something in you that he didn't feel in a normal average customer. So you're able to make a relationship and an impact on him in a very short, quick period of time that he hadn't felt with anybody else. And clearly you said he looked in your eyes and he was like, okay. I always say the eyes are the window to the soul. People yeah. look and they can see your entire soul. They can see all your intentions and they can see whether you're going to do what you say you're going to do or not. I call it moral authority, right? Yeah. And I know you know that, but like your moral authority was there and that's cool, dude. Yeah. Hey, crazy shit, man. Good times. Um, good times. Guys, uh, super important. If they want to follow you on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram, the Heath treasure. You can follow Ultimate Blue Collar as well. Ultimate Blue Collar is our uh, coaching platform and our community platform that's that's fixing to launch. You can reach out to us on either one of those platforms. YouTube is Heath Treasure. Facebook is The Heath Treasure. Or you can go to theheathtreasure.com or ultimatebluecollar.com and find me. But be watching for Ultimate Blue Collar to launch. Uh, it's a platform that's going to have a whole gamut of coaches available to help you grow, scale, and build your blue collar business along with services that might help you with your blue collar business. And if you're interested in uh, having some coaching on uh, scale, building, scaling, and becoming exit ready, then uh, I'm on the co coaching platform as well. Yeah, and they can DM you, right? And they can DM me. Yeah, yeah. so so just, I mean, the easiest one is going to be um, Heath. The Heath Treasure. Yeah, yeah. the Heath Treasure. treasure. At the very just, least, go follow that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, 
because he gave you like 19 of them. But I know that you can follow all of them. But a lot of you guys, if you're like, man, dude, I want to learn from this guy, just go DM him. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot us a and, DM. And, and that's simple. And then and they'll take it from there. And this big coaching program is about to launch. And it's going to be kick ass. Guys, what a cool story. Okay. I know a lot of you, you're watching this right now. You're the one percenters. You made it all the way through. Let's go. And you're going to build a story just like Heath. Like that's what's going to happen. And it's us crazy people that make it. They make statues of the crazy dreamers, not the critics and the haters. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, so let's make some statues. Let's, let's, right, let's, let's do it, bro. Hey, guys, have a blessed day. We appreciate you. And I'm probably going to have this guy on a million more because I know we only told a couple of the stories that he knows. I feel like there's a million other stories. A lot of stories. Okay, love you guys. Have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next podcast. Let's kill it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. Okay.